Hello. Right. So, today I'm going to be giving a tutorial on the absolute basics of using FL Studio. Now, I often see in my comments and things like that, or get personal messages of people saying things like they want to start making music because uh, either I or someone else has inspired them to start, but they either don't know where to begin or inspiration never comes to them. And so I thought I would make a video to tackle the uh, problem of, you know, not knowing how to use any software because it can be quite daunting. Now I use FL Studio 10. Um, previous versions of FL Studio and later ones might be slightly different, but for the most part they're all the same, so what I say today will probably apply for most of them. So, um, assuming you've got it, we're going to go ahead and start it up. And you'll be presented with a screen that doesn't quite look like this, because I've got mine set up kind of how I like it. So, what I'm going to do is tell you to go to, uh, I think it's new from template, I guess it isn't because I didn't do anything. <laughs> um, we'll just start new, and what what might happen is that you might have some excuse that you might have some sounds already in here. Um, FL Studio has, I think, a kick, a hat, a clap, and a snare here by default. And um, what I'm going to get you to do is actually remove all of those. So if you right-click on these and delete them. Okay, I can't delete that one, but I guess it must have at least one, but I'm going to get you to remove as many of those as possible. Um, we're going to eventually learn how to put things in here ourselves because that's kind of important. Um, but okay, step one, press F12 on your keyboard. Um, this You don't have to do this every time you start FL Studio, but we're going to do this so we can start from a ground up kind of point. F12 just closes all windows. And we're going to click these buttons up here and see what they bring up. Uh, the first one brings up this thing, which is called the playlist, which is essentially where our entire song is going. Now, you can move these wherever you want to. FL Studio is a bit of a cluttered mess. Um, it doesn't really have any snapping, so you just have to sort of let it hover over here. I like to have it on the right side of my screen at all times. Some people might want to double click it whenever they want it and bring it up here full screen that's fine too um, just do whatever you want but I'm having mine over on the right here this next one you click it and it's it's this dude um, I'm pretty sure pressing F12 doesn't get rid of that but it's this thing which is where we create individual patterns and patterns are things like drum loops that you might make or melodies that you might make and I'll be showing you how to make these later um, but I like to have that up here and this one is not important yet, but it's the piano roll. Um, I like to kind of have this minimized. I don't let it sit anywhere particular. Um, this is only really used when we create melodies or particularly complex drum beats. Um, again, I'll show you later, but I'm going to close that for now. Now, this one um, is also another thing that doesn't disappear with F12. This is the browser, which is now just disappeared on the left. Um, when you click that, it might not be snapped over to the left like that. For some reason, this is the only thing in FL Studio that likes to snap. Um, you can snap it to the right, you can snap it to the left. Uh, I like to have mine over to the left, and this is where all your samples will be. I already have a sample folder in here, which is like rooted to somewhere else on my computer. Uh, you won't at this point if you are just starting, but you will have all of these other things uh, like this folder called PAX, which is FL Studios like default samples folder, which we will use in a minute. Um, so yeah, snap that over to the left or wherever you want to put it. And this last button here is our mixer, where all of our sounds will be channeled into, and we can add effects onto them and you know change their volumes individually later. I like to put that right down here. You can resize any of these windows by doing this, so I like to have them resize so they fit into a space. Um, this one doesn't resize unless you turn this up, which is uh, how long 
this pattern is going to be. Uh, it by default is 4, so anything beneath that will decrease it. And then you turn it up and it will be longer. This is like a per pattern sort of thing and it will change size throughout your project. Right, so now we're at this point. What we want to do is add some drum samples. Uh, you will have a folder in here called Packs. So if we click on that, this is a bunch of default FL Studio stuff. I'm just going to go straight to Drum Kit 1 and hope it has something good. And we want to look in here for a kick, and it only has one. Um, of course, you can look in the others, but we're going to use this one. Actually, no, we're not. It's not good. Uh, let's use. Nope, also not good. Oh boy, oh boy. I'm not even going to bother looking in there. That's better. Let's use that. Okay, so drum kit four, kick four. We're going to drag this in here to an empty space and let go. I think I can now delete this one. Yes, so here's our kick. Oh yeah, by the way, clicking on this will bring up this window, which I like to sit here. This is just your sort of sample properties window. Um, so now we want a snare. So we've got two to choose from in this pack, which are not particularly good. So let's look in another pack. Yeah, you know what, this one will do. Um, let's get some hats, which are our little clicky cymbal sounds. This one, hat closed 05, will do. Um, that'll do. We don't really need a clap for now. Um, you, you know what, let's use drums, drum kit 6's clap. I'm going to put that there. So now we've got all these sounds, and if you click them, you'll see this window will change to show you each one. If you click this here, you can hear it. So, we're going to make a quick beat, a really quick uh, four beat beat. These are individual beats like this. Uh, these, these colors, these reds, grays, reds, grays, mark where the next beat in a bar is starting. So if you click them like this, you're going to get a like that when you click the play button at the top. But we're going to make it really simple and just have one beat per beat like that. And if you press play, you'll hear that. If you're not hearing anything, it might be because this is set to song. Uh, clicking this will switch between pattern and song. If you notice if I click song and press play, it's playing over here in our song, which is non-existent right now. So if you click pattern, it will play the current pattern for you. So here's our beat so far, and we want to have a snare on every second beat, so the second and the fourth beat, like this. I mean, obviously, this is very simple and you're not limited to making beats like this, but I'm keeping this as simple as possible. And let's have a hat on each beat and every and in between it. So one and two and three and. Sick. And for the clap, we're just going to use it to spice up the second snare. So I'm only going to put it on this one. And I'm kind of glad that you can't really hear the clap making a difference, so we're going to make that a bit louder. You can do that here, or you can do it in a number of other places, like here, which is actually the same dial. Um, you could normalize it if it were a particularly quiet sample, but this one isn't, so that hasn't really made any difference. Um, so let's see how that sounds now, it's louder. Okay, so there's a slight difference going on there. I'd say that's maybe enough. Um, now what we're going to do is start using the mixer. We're going to put each one of these into their own channel. So we're going to click this kick drum, which will bring it up in here. And what you can do is you can drag this up and down. And if you see the mixer down at the bottom there, it's changing the channel. Now, I'm going to leave it blank and teach you something here. If you click this and go assign free mixer track, it will put it in the first free one, which for some reason isn't number one, it's number two. Um, it might be number one for you, it might not. Whatever, it's now in mixer track two. So we'll click the snare. Excuse me. 
and do the same. The same for your mixer track, same for the clap, I mean the hi-hat, and same for the clap. So now these tracks, uh, mixer tracks, should all be named after what's in them. And if I play the pattern, you'll see these all light up with their volumes. Nice. Um, now what we can do with these is add some effects to them, but for now, I'm going to leave them how they are because they sound fine for uh, first tutorial purposes, and I'm going to teach you how to put it into a song. So we're going to go up here where it says Pattern 1, click that, and that will make this playlist uh, have Pattern 1 at the top here. You can also click this drop down and choose any other pattern you've made but we've only got pattern one. So that will mean we're now painting in here with pattern one, and we're going to click at the beginning to place pattern one. You can click and drag if you have this paintbrush tool selected to place your beat, and then change this to song and press play. And the pattern we've made is now officially part of our song. Now we're going to want some sort of melody. So the first step to this is going to be hovering over pattern one and either right clicking and insert one or the way I prefer to do it is just roll the mouse wheel up which will move us to number two which is empty. Um, now we're going to go to channels up here and add one and you're not going to have a list as big as this unless you know this isn't your first time using FL because um, I have some external plugins but we're going to pick something which is not an external plugin. Um, let's go with. Let's have FL keys because I'm not going to teach you how to make a synth today. I'm just going to teach you how to make a basic melody and put it in your song. Um, this isn't exactly a synthesizer, it's just a piano emulator. Um, right. So now we've got this. It doesn't really matter where you put it. Um, because we're going to be closing that at some point. Um, we're going to, this is where the, this screen comes up. So what we're going to do is right click on FL keys and click piano roll, which will bring up this window and assign the FL keys to it. And if you click any of these keys here, you'll see that it's using that particular synth. Right. Uh, before we do any of that, let's assign it a quick mixer track. So click on FL keys, which will change this properties window to FL keys. A lot of stuff will disappear because we're not dealing with samples anymore. But the same thing still applies. Click this, assign free mixer track, and it's given mixer track 6 to us. Okay, so now let's make a melody. Uh, each one of these lines here is a beat. Okay, and if you remember our actual uh, beat we made, pattern one, is uh, four of these long. So we're just going to make a melody that's say four or eight beats long. Uh, we'll just make it in C major because that's all the white keys starting with C and it's easy for these purposes. So you click here with the pencil tool to place a note and if your note is not the right length, you can click on the right hand side of it and change its length. You can also click the left hand side to change its length, but only if you have that selected, which is somewhere in here. Yeah, edit, allow resize from left. Uh, I suggest you turn that on because it's very handy. So now we've got a little terrible um, C major melody. So I'm going to click Pattern here and press play. How nice. And we're going to have a little response to that. So I'm not going to teach you how to write a melody here, but I'm just going to write one that at least makes a bit of sense. Okay, so now we've got... <laughs> it sounds a bit like a nursery rhyme, which you'll get if you don't use major, um, you know, 
with any kind of experimentation. So, okay, let's put this in our song. So let's close the piano roll, because it'll still be here. And we are going to click pattern two, or select it from here, and place it wherever we want. Let's place it just here, like that, or perhaps here, like that. Um, so we have a bit of a song structure going, so we'll have four bars of this beat, and then the piano will come in. Click song, click play. much more to it um, as far as placing parts of your song into here goes however I'm gonna teach you very quickly how to add some effects or mixing tools to these sounds to make them pop a bit or make them a bit cool so let's first of all I think the beat sounds okay if you double click on anything in here it will open up its pattern if it is a pattern you can put samples in here individually um, I'll teach you that in a minute. <coughs> um, yeah, double click on your pattern to bring it up in here, and we'll go to pattern. Now, I think that sounds alright as it is. It's not particularly uh, full of character, but it's it's decently enough mixed. So let's just click on the keys here. Click on pattern two. Close that, and we're going to click this drop down bar here in number one and go to select and these are effects and you can use effects to help your mixing or you can use effects to give them character or both I am going to give this piano a little bit of character so I'm gonna add something I love to add is fruity chorus now I'm not gonna teach you necessarily the ins and outs of fruity chorus. I'm just going to add it and use its default state and show you how that's changed the sound. Here we go. So you can hear that's already changed the sound and if I turn it off you can hear even better. Right. So I'm going to just leave that how it is and add another thing. I'm going to add delay bank which is essentially an echo with lots and lots of features in it. The default state of it is fine for these purposes, so I'm not going to teach you how to use it again, just how to put it in here. You can experiment with all of this stuff by yourself. Um, and let's see how that sounds. So it's given it a bit of an echo. Um, if I turn this middle dial up a little bit, it's going to spread the uh, left and right channels a little so you get a bit of stereo going on. Which has given that terrible melody a little bit of life. Um, so now let's hear it in context. Uh, you can click song here or actually you can just click anywhere on this bar and that will automatically change it to song and start playing from the point where you click it. So, mm, there you have it, I guess. Um, we could add a little bit of bass to fill this out. Let's add one and go to something simple like Boo Bass, which is a kind of bass guitar simulator that isn't particularly good, but is fine for our purposes. And we're going to go to... You know what, we're going to stay in pattern 2, because I'm going to teach you about being able to see the pattern that you're in while writing a different instrument. You'll see what I mean. Click Piano Roll by right-clicking on Boo Bass. Now what you'll see here is you can see the piano already. Now that might not be the case for you, because I've selected this myself. So let's go to... where is it? It's in here somewhere. Ah, helpers. Go into Helpers and click Ghost Channels, which I've obviously just turned off, but click Ghost Channels and here you go. You can see 
anything else that's in the same pattern behind it and this will help you stay relatively in in key with what you're doing so we've got our C major melody going on here and I can just imitate it with the bass which is quite boring let's click pattern we can make it a bit more interesting and perhaps go down I don't know how this is going to sound it might sound great better melodies in my life but that'll do so now we've got a bass it doesn't sound particularly heavy on the bass end we can change some settings in here I'm gonna turn down the mids and the trebles all the way actually so it's just mostly bass let's turn the bass up thing I think I'll show you is adding samples straight into this window so if you want to have a cymbal crash let's find one let's go into drum kit one and just pick god these are bad fine crash 1a will do if we click and drag this we can put it in here but I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna put it straight here because then I don't have to worry about it being part of a pattern um, and making a new pattern just for the same beat with a crash in it. I can just have it straight in here and it will play wherever I put it once. And that sounded terrible, but it'll do. Uh, it teaches the purpose of it. If you double click on it, it will bring up this window. You'll see that our pattern has brought up just it in here because I've I've dragged it in. If you click this box and click all, it'll show you everything including the crash. Um, so I'm gonna assign it a free mixer track and turn it down in here in the mix. And I'm gonna do a bit of EQ on it which is gonna help you with making it sit better in the song. By clicking this, going to select, going to parametric EQ2 and this will help us make louder or make quieter certain frequencies of this crash. Now it had quite a lot of mids going on which are sort of like your uh, well let me let me play it how it was and you'll see these light up depending on which frequencies are louder so I want to turn these down and you'll hear the difference And if I turn all of these down as well, because they're kind of unnecessary, and this one up a bit, it'll make it sound kind of brighter. I would put a lot more work into making that sound better, but don't need to, because this is just a basic tutorial. So, okay, now we've got a pretty terrible little song. However, we've got a song, so... If you've never done that before, pat yourself on the back. Let's export it so you can show your friends and they can laugh at you. So let's press file. Uh, let's save it first, actually. This will save the, you know, the actual project file into FL Studio. Um, let's call it Poo on my face. And we're going to go to file export and export a WAV file of it. Let's go to any folder we want to by clicking well, actually, I've got favorites down here, so you might have to do it up here. Um, but I'm not going to do that because I've got my favorites sorted out. I'm sure you know how to work Windows File Explorer. So I'm going to go to here. I think I have a folder called Tutorials, maybe. Do I? No, I don't. Let's make one. So Poo on My Face is now going to be saved in here. 
and this will bring up this window which is for setting our rendering properties um, there's a few things in here that I'll go over looping mode um, if you want to make a song that say loops perfectly then you will want to have this set to cut remainder or wrap remainder and what this will do is as opposed to leave remainder which if you have any echoes applied um, say let's pretend this crash was further over here and it had like an echo applied to it um, so that it like continued longer than its own sample if that makes sense then the song would account for that until the sound died out whereas if you have it on cut remainder it will end exactly where all your inputted stuff ends so in this case it this song will end here if I left this to leave remainder right now, for example, because our piano has that echo on it, it will wait till that echo has died after the song has finished. I'm going to set it to cut because I don't like doing that. I just, I'd rather have more control. Um, so cut will basically just stop the recording right here. Rap, I believe, will render the beginning of the song with whatever was trailing off this end. So the delay from here, the echo from this piano here, will actually be at the beginning of the song in case you want to make a perfectly looping song. So cut is what I'm going to choose. And up here, WAV is already ticked. I'm going to also tick MP3 so that it will render in both a WAV file and MP3. Here is our MP3 quality slider. Um, I always have it set to 320. Don't really need anything higher. Um, 320 is kind of the standard. Uh, WAV, you can select the bit depth. I have mine set to 16 because you don't really need 32 unless you are exporting this to master in an external program, but I do all my mastering in FL Studio anyway, so I'll keep it set to 16. That's kind of a lesson for another day. For your purposes, at the moment, 16 is fine. And then let's go, let's click start. That might be slower or quicker for you. Um, so there you go, you now have, let's go find it. So here it is, here's our stuff. I'm gonna open up the WAV in VLC and make sure it's working. first song is done. Congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back. Now, normally, I'll be, I've actually made lots of tutorials before, but they're, um, they're on my Patreon. Now, I don't really like putting things behind a paywall. That's, that's not really my jam. However, I kind of need to do that to live. Um, but I did this one here because I do get a lot of people saying to me, you know, that they want to start making music, that they're inspired to start making music, but they don't know where to start, um, they don't know what program to get, they don't know this, they don't know that, so I thought a very basic tutorial would be very helpful. Um, so here you go. Of course, if you want more of these, they are on my Patreon. I'll probably release a few more basic tutorial videos out here for free as well, um, because it's just nice to do that, um, and I don't want to hide everything behind a paywall. So here you go. Poo in my face is done. What a brilliant track. Uh, see you later. <laughs>